What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through today's MLB slate, and uh, we got a big one. I, I, had, a, I had, a, had, a, had another shot last night. I uh, finished fourth in the monster on FanDuel. It wasn't the big giant monster, but it was nice to have a shot, and uh, we almost got there. We did say in our in our early show, and hey, we want to, you know, playing the we're going to play the Yankees and, and the Dodgers and Sheets. We both uh, we both did, and. And it was, I mean, it was good. It didn't quite, didn't quite get there. I wish I would have committed a little more, but uh, I thought we thought we gave out the right idea yesterday. Yeah. I felt we deserved better. I did. I, I really felt that, um, that, that uh, going that way and having the runs that they all got I felt, I felt as though I should have had it somehow, but I just didn't, I didn't, you know, what? I didn't, I didn't play judge as much, you know what I mean? Cause I had to choose, you know, so I did have the Stanton, but then I went more for the Dodgers part over there. And, and it was a, uh, I got that didn't exactly get the right Dodgers and, and no Dodger by himself, particularly smashed, you know, like everybody just kind of did their thing, you know, Bellinger um, was pretty good for, for, for the, pri- for the, the price for the and the ownership. Yeah. 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 And you know, listen, I got Freeman up with the bases loaded. I mean, uh, yep. later on, I mean, so yeah. And, uh, and Brew Baker, as we said, just, just did enough to get us access to all those hitters, you know, and that's, uh, and that's uh, one way to play. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, and, and by the way, seized, I mean, what, what, what kind of a, what a crazy game just gets hit beaten around, but it strikes out 11 guys in four innings. I mean, right. come on, that's pretty nuts. You know, I mean, yeah. it's lit- obviously literally uh, one off what you can do yep. one off the record. Um, all right, let's get into today's slate. We'll, we'll bring up your screen and we'll go game by game and uh, figure out what we can do on this monster slate. We got some nice big tournaments today. It's uh it should be another, another possible day. Ask, actually, by the way, they had a, had a couple of decent lineups in the uh, in the, the 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 NBA as well yesterday. Uh, uh, had a had a, I won on on FanDuel. I finished I think like fifteenth or something. And with my I only played one entry over there. And then I had a shot in the in the alley oop for a little bit, but it wasn't quite really a shot. But it was still a good another good night of DFS overall. So we're we're back after it anyway. Let's talk about the yeah, a lot a lot lot. Listen, so first of all, a little preview. I, I have a lot of pitching to work through. Yeah. Um, today, I mean, a lot of options and th- that not to mention the fact that currently, just because of the way that some sites put stuff out there, I don't even have Scherzer on my board yet. I'm going to put him in my board soon. I'm sure that he's going to just rock it towards the top, you know? So, right. like, so I even have like, like a whole bunch of pictures without him, you know? So, so there's going to be, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how, how it all shakes out, but I got a lot of guys really close. Um, so yep. either Scherzer is going to be like, head and shoulders above all of them, or he's going to be part of the whole glut of guys I have to figure out. So uh, I'm, I'm interested to kind of get through it with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know it's, it's, it's going to be a tough one. This is a, you know, these big slates are, are really tough this time of year right now. So let's get, let's get into it. Let's talk about the Houston Washington situation. I think that you're going to get a little bit of interest in people in on Houston uh, high run total. I personally am at first glance, not going overboard on this game. Uh, I, I still believe in Josiah Gray's long-term talent. And by the way, he's actually started to show some signs this year of, of being pretty good. He does give up some hard contact. He will challenge people. You can run on him there. There certainly might be some bats that make sense for Houston, but personally, I'm not really getting to, to a whole lot in this game. If I had to pick any players, it'd be guys like Kyle Tucker or Jordan Alvarez um, but not really overall interested in this game, uh, particularly. I have Houston ranked like six, um, which is pretty, which I guess kind of up there, but if they're going to be, uh, heavily owned, I don't really need a big part of it. Um, Valdez and gray, these are guys that, um, that might make a, you know, a list if there weren't so many other decent options, um, or better options, I think. So I don't think I'm going to get to those guys. Um, so for me, I'm kind of with you. It's a kind of a kind of a pass um houston would be my only interest and probably not at, 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 if it's even remotely high ownership yeah i don't i don't even think necessarily it'll be particularly high i just sort of was noticing that they're sort of projecting like they're the projections sort of like them and i just i don't know it's 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 fine um i i definitely don't mind it if 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 i as a as a pivot stack from some popular ones but certainly not something i'm initially trying to target today um Let's talk about Toronto and Tampa Bay. Uh, this is, uh, you got, you got a really good pitcher in, in Gaussman on the mound and but the, the Rasmussen plus the, the bullpen thing and Rasmussen has been like awesome. 
I don't think we're playing him or anything like that, but it does make me less interested in Toronto. And it feels like every day these days, Toronto's got sort of a tough matchup. Um, I, I do like Gaussman for what it's worth. I don't know how much of him I'll end up with, but this guy is just, he's been awesome. He's been consistent. It's been going on almost two years now. Um, I, I, I am a little interested in Gaussman, but I, it's hard to, to separate the top tier for me. So where do you stand on this one? Exactly like that. I exactly, I agree with that, the, those sentiments. And I like Gaussman as well. And he's up there with the other three, as far as I'm concerned, uh, three top options. Um, uh, and he's certainly proven that he deserves to be up there, you know, um, and he's going to be owned. Probably I got them all equal, <laughs> even ownership, you know? So, so we'll, we'll get to all these guys, but he's, Gaussman is certainly in play. And, um, and I agree with Toronto. I, I don't really, I'm not really getting to them. And like you said, maybe, you know, listen, they, they, they're Toronto is good hitters, but if they keep getting tough matchups, it's, uh, it's tough. And I'm Rasmus is just good enough, you know, to keep Toronto off my board, you know? Right. Um, so I'm not getting to Toronto. I am not getting to Tampa, but I will get to Gaussman. Yeah. For what it's worth. I do. Th- I do find the, the interest, the inter- one of the interesting things about these pitchers is that, I mean, Ras- Rasmussen is like, he's been really, really good in Toronto. Like it's very weird to see teams like Toronto with under four run totals when they're not like playing in bad weather conditions in this, uh, in a dome, obviously it's still not a great hitters park, but just that just shows you that they were, you know, the, the respect for Rasmussen and, and the, the bullpen for Tampa Bay. Um, but again, if you ever want to find a one-off that that's going to be low owned, Toronto is, they keep getting these tough matchups. So you, the other night when they, when they went nuts against, I can't remember, was it the, I can't, was the Yankees? Yeah. Against Severino. Everybody, the highest owned player was George Springer at 0.7%. Um, and when you can get those ownership on these guys who like all could hit ho- multiple home runs between Tiasca or Vlad and them, you can always sort of mix them into your, if you're making uh, multi-entries, I think you want to look at them for one-offs or even mini stacks almost all the time. Um, just because they're that, they, they're just an immense amount of power. Um, all right. I Scherzer, I, I have as a priority on in this next game against Seattle. Um, I think that he is, I, he's still the best, one of the best three pitchers, five pitchers, whatever we want to say in baseball. I don't know where we rank him because, you know, people would say, oh, but he's not been quite as good because these numbers and that numbers this year. And I'm like, well, all he does is strike out seven to 10 guys every game and pitch six or seven innings and get usually gets the win and doesn't give up many runs, which are all good things. Yeah. So aside, yeah. aside, from, aside, from, aside from that, he sucks. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 the one thing I would say about him is that he, he is giving up a lot more hard contact, but it's also because he doesn't, you know, in the games where he does, doesn't walk anybody, you're going to give up hard contact. If you pitch the way that Scherzer does, it's just the way that it goes, but you're also going to strike out a ton of those guys too. So I like Scherzer and um, I have Scherzer just ahead of Gaussman. And I think, I don't like the Mets as a stack, but I do, I do want to say that I like Pete Alonzo quite a bit. I always am going to play Pete Alonzo against lefties. And I, I wouldn't mind if you wanted to get a mini stack with, with Marte and maybe Lindor, but mostly it's just going to be Alonzo for me and uh, Scherzer. Yeah. I didn't get to the hitting here. And as I mentioned, I didn't have uh, Scherzer projected yet. So we'll have to see where he shows up. And uh, I mean, obviously he's going to be, if not the top, at least one of the top options. That's yeah, kind of yeah. see where, where, where it goes. But um, yep, totally agree. Scherzer is going to be in the mix, if not the top of the mix. Um, and I, I'm not, uh, listen, Alonzo, again, I'm not going to really focus on the one-offs here, but I certainly am not going to argue with it. And I'm not really getting to the, from the stacks, I'm not really getting to Mets Seattle. What I did, just so you guys know, and this is the way I prepared for this, is as I looked at like how, how the teams ranked, as far as just raw, raw numbers, and I looked at maybe value, then I try to incorporate ownership a little bit. The good thing is it's in a million game slate, so ownership is not going to be that big of a deal. Right. Um, um, and then I just have like my top six that are just kind of like factoring all of it in. So it's not as if maybe I wouldn't find the Mets if I ran them one way or the other. I just don't have them as my overall top six. So um, right. I'm not getting to the Mets right now. Yeah, it's, it, I, I did want to point out that in 27 innings this year, Marco Gonzalez has given up eight home runs. That's the reason I was interested a little bit in the one-offs or the mini stacks. And I think that, you know, he's, he's running into contact more. And, and by the way, in real life, I'm just going to oh, I'm gonna say it for the people in the back. Marco Gonzalez is a really good real-life pitcher. He actually, he gets through, he eats innings. 
He doesn't get a ton of strikeouts. He's not a guy we use for DFS, so everybody wants to pick on him all the time. And he does. He, he's given up some power this year, but he is a good real life pitcher that you don't generally want a full stack against. I mean, he got a game. He, he's had games where he's given up multiple home runs, and he gave up three home runs in a game this year and only gave up two earned runs. Tell me how that that's that's a hard one to, to make work. Um, he just doesn't give up that many runs. He hasn't given up more than three in a game this season, and uh, at the same time, I the the the, the, the the righty power getting to him does make me want to play Alonzo every time that happens. I just feel like highlight as a one-off uh, for me anyway, and maybe Marte as well. Uh, so Baltimore, Baltimore, great. so Baltimore, to try, I presume the Erod's going to be the chalk. Um, that's just, that's, I, I imagine, I mean, he's, he's 7,100 projecting well and against, you know, against uh, he's projecting well, obviously because he's against Baltimore and he's been doing pretty well, pretty well. Not to mention that you want something cheap to pair with some of these stud, you know, stud pitchers, unless you want to try to jam them both in. So I, I presume that he's going to be pretty, pretty popular and probably for, for probably for a good reason. Um, I have him rated at least right now number one, you know, point per dollar. Um, but there are other things you could do. Um, but but uh, even in that range. But right now, I, 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 I that's why I have him Erod uh, uh, rated. Um, I did not get to either the hitting of this game and, and, and I will just kind of say that again, kind of a point per dollar, just kind of dart throw. I mean, you don't really like to play this guy ever, but Jordan Lyles at 5,400 um, is kind of showing up as kind of an okay play. If you wanted to play, you know, like a mid, uh, uh, cheaper pitcher, that's not Erod. Um, but there are other things you could do besides that. So that that's where I have these guys right now. I have both pitchers kind of in play, but Erod, for me is, you know, uh, looks really, really strong. Yeah. I, I, I have, uh, I definitely have some, I don't know how much, how pop, if he's going to be quite as popular as you think. Um, yeah. He does have a five and a half K prop at 7,100, which just that on its own on a big slate is definitely interesting. And, and he, you know, you're facing Baltimore. So, you know, there's, there's some holes. I, I don't, I don't mind though, if anybody wants to play, like th- th- this is a spot where like playing Santander Hayes as, you know, mini ish value plays like halfway value plays, even Mateo um, who's, you know, has got some pop. I-, I think that all of these guys make a little bit of enough of a, enough sense to where I, I would get it. I-, I wouldn't mind like ending up with, with, you know, with one of them, but it's not what I would target. I do like the Detroit side of this. The problem is again, we get the 10 mile an hour wind blowing in from center. It sort of got, gets me a little less interested. I actually like Detroit and I like the, the matchup with Lyles for them. I like Baez. I like uh, Meadows. I even like scope uh, down at the bottom. And uh, I, I'm probably not going to fully stack them, but I do have Detroit as, as, a, as a team that I'm going to probably use as a secondary stack, maybe a two man with Baez and Meadows or something like that would be what I would do. Yeah. And the, another reason, if you didn't, if you needed another reason why, he, he rattles going to be on. I mean, just in his last game, he gave up one hit through almost seven innings against the Astros. Right. Um, the hundred pitches and, and, and eight. Probably, and so people are going to react to that. as well. Probably right. You're probably right. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I just didn't, I, I'm just looking at the early projections don't have him very own, but I don't think that means anything. I think yeah. he should be more on than he actually is right now. Yeah. Uh, where he's being projected for. So this is right. something like this, by the way, and we'll get to, uh, there's, listen, there's a, a billion permutations what you do, but something like this, like Scherzer, Erod, I think this is going to be where a lot of cash games start, you know, and where, I don't know, it, it depends how Scherzer rates. I mean, I, I haven't even looked at Scherzer projections yet. I'm just presuming he, as usually, rates near the top. Yeah. But I think I think between either Scherzer, Erod, Cole, Erod, Kershaw, Erod, Kazuma, I think Erod's just going to show up in a lot of these bills. Yep. Yeah, it, it makes plenty of sense to me. Uh, part of the reason why it might be a little bit less is because you've got a guy in, I think you Darvish at 8,500 is, is extremely reasonable. Um, I, I obviously like Atlanta's offense in general, but Darvish is, you know, probably, I don't know, he had the one horrible game. And other than that has been basically, I don't want to say lights out, but he's been really, really good. Um, you know, there's a little bit to worry about, about the, the, the strikeouts drop a, a little bit. Um, there are some strikeouts in that Atlanta lineup. So I, I do have Darvish as one of my guys, and I do have Freed as a pivot off of other guys who everyone wants to spend up on, but not as a priority. It's probably worth it to note, though, that, I mean, two out of the last four games, Freed's been over 30 fantasy points in tough matchups. One was the Dodgers, obviously, and he's been over 20 in his last four. He just eats up innings. The strikeouts have been a little bit better this year. Uh, everything's a quality start with him basically every time he gets on the mound. 
So I, I have a, you know, I think both these pitchers are interesting and it's a, it's a, a stadium I generally would want to attack. Um, well, it's, well, it's nice and warm in Atlanta, but it, right now, I, I think both these pitchers are very much in play, especially Darvish. Yeah, I agree with that. I have Darvish rated just, you know, just a little bit below those other guys, but only because, you know, he's cheaper. It's, it's totally different. Um, right. I have him just totally reasonable. Like if you can get in, you know, one of those studs and, and, and Darvish instead of Erod, for example, and still make the rest of it work, I'm sure the 1400, it's not that hard to, 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 to get to, you know? Um, and like you said, Darvish does have that, um, you know, he can, he can play, you know, he can put up a bad game. That's certainly, certainly reasonable, but you know, this is GPPs and he can put up a good game too. Um, yep. Freed on the other hand, can't ever put up a bad game. <laughs> he just keeps putting up either, either decent games or great games. <laughs> That's really what he does. Right, um, right. Uh, I, I have a feeling that just the way the math works, I just don't know if he can be the top performer though. You know, there's just too many, the, the chances that all of those guys like Cole, Kershaw, uh, Gausman, like these high strikeout guys and, um, and Scherzer all underscore uh, Freed is very, is, is, Seems unlikely, but like you said, even Freed himself has, has has ramped up the strikeouts a little bit this year. So maybe I'm underestimating you. No, I, I think that I think that's an accurate description. It's hard to want to play a guy like that, but because of that, no one's going to play him, and yeah. you could end up with a guy lower owned that puts up 30 when the other guys put up 20 and is cheaper. Um, so it, it, he should always be in the mixes because people don't, don't want to play him because the the strikeout rate not being as much as the other guys. But at the same time, he is a little bit cheaper. And he's just really freaking good. He's, he doesn't really like have, you know, I don't, you know, I'm sure they'll have a couple of year, but he's, he just doesn't really have bad starts. It's sort of like the Walker Bueller thing. It's they're very similar in, a, in that, in that sense. So I think, I think both of them are very, very interesting. Um, even though, again, like you said, there's better pitchers to come in a minute. Um, <clears throat> we've got Pavetta and Dunning in Texas here. I am very surprised at this projected run total. I thought this would be a game that everyone would be on. I am surprised that other than like Miller and Simeon, I'm not seeing anybody who's going to be overly owned. I think by the end of the day, Corey Seager will be pretty popular. And if he's not, we should, we should be all over this. Um, Look, we know Pavetta is all over the map with his range of outcomes. It's sort of like the, the guy that used to be Kevin Gaussman Um, was awesome in his last start against the White Sox Uh, before that has not been awesome. Hasn't been giving up the home runs that we that we usually see from him. He still has the the control problems. He had two games in a row without a walk, which I don't know if he's ever done in his life. Before that, he's he's walking four four in in four innings, two and in two innings, three and in five innings. He he's a he's a guy who can get walk happy, and I just think this is a game that that like both sides are kind of appealing. I don't again, I don't think Dunning is bad, um, but it is Boston at no ownership and. I think that there's, this is a spot where maybe you can get a little bit off the board uh, and individually bat wise. Uh, I think Brad Miller, again, will be really popular, especially after hitting a home run yesterday. And Corey Seager is the, is the other one. But other than that, I, I don't expect people in this game to be owned very much. So just a low on Boston against Texas. I'm pretty sure the roof will be closed, but I'll double check before live. Um, it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a different game to stack that I don't think people are, are on very much. Yeah, so uh, I, I have Texas actually is one of my top six overall, counting yep. everything with value and stuff. And yet, on the other hand, I, I, I kind of feel as though Pavetta could break the slate <laughs> right. uh, at seventy five hundred. You know, you have uh, especially I didn't realize I, I didn't realize I forgot it. I'm looking at Brad Miller at twenty six hundred. He's going to be twenty percent on plus. So, so you even get a little little sneaky leverage. You know what I mean? Like even against all these one offs that played Miller by playing yep. Pavetta. Yep. Um, so he could certainly break the slate. He could certainly break your entire lineups. I mean, that's, it's certainly possible also, you know? Um, so I'll probably, I'll probably have some of that. I'll, I'll probably have more of Texas than of Pavetta. Um, but I, I'll, I'll have some Pavetta just in case. I mean, look, like I said, 70, if, 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 if the, if the, if the uh, industry train, and I don't know how it's going to work, right? I, I usually, I think it's going to go one way, but then it doesn't. If the industry train really just starts piling on the E-Rod, which is possible, you know, and he ends up 25% owned or something like that, then then guys like Pavetta and guys in that range that are different, um, then, then you can get some real action. Um, so uh, I, I agree with that. And I would take it a step further. I mean, I, I mentioned that I think that both of these offenses have the, have potential, but 
I, I think Dunning is is in play. If it was any other slate, I mean, just look right. at what he's done this year. Yeah. I mean, he's he's been really, really good. He's 6,700. He's, you know, his last game, and it was against the Yankees. He, you know, he has, what did he go? He went six innings, five strikeouts, one run. He goes the Atlanta the game before, seven and two-thirds, seven strikeouts, one run. Um, he's he's had some really, really nice outings. I, I don't think he's going to end up making it for me, but I, I certainly think he should be on a, a mass multi-entry list for sure. Like, like if you want to lose, right? And when I say, I hope everybody realizes I'm being affectionate, you know what I mean? When I say you want to lose, it really means you want to win the whole thing by yourself because you have to try to lose to do that sort of. Yep. Um, if you really want to lose, you could play you could play Pavetta, like Darvish, for example. Uh huh. And then just then, then freaking do whatever you want hitting. <laughs> You're not worried like about Colorado, like ever, Colorado, right? You know? Yeah. So uh, that's uh, something to think about. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I, it's, yeah, it's interesting. This, that was definitely a game where I could see every argument for the pitching and the hitting, um, on, you know, in, in big ways. Which, which Pavetta is one of those guys. Um, he does that for what it's worth. Both pitchers in that game have a five and a half K prop, which is the same as Darvish. I'm sorry, not the same as Darvish. It's one below Darvish. It's the same as Max Freed. That's partly why no one will ever play Max Freed. Is he has the same K prop as guys who are three K, two and a half K bigger than him. But you have Garrett Cole in this game. It's going to be hard for me to resist this one. I have him right there with Scherzer Kershaw. Um, and I don't know why the Yankees run total is projected this low. It's going to make me go double check my weather and got a little weather wind blowing in from right field. Um, I'd rather play the lefties in, against Velasquez, but I'm very happy to play the righties and I have, the Yankees as a definite potential stack. Uh, we've seen Velasquez blow up many times in the past. I know that he, you know, has quote, like been better this year, I guess. I mean, his last two starts anyway, he's been okay. Um, I have no problem trying to take shots against Velasquez. It is a good bullpen that they have in Chicago, although you wouldn't notice it by the fact that they gave, I think the bullpen gave up 10 runs last night or eight runs, whatever it was, because the Yankees scored a million. Uh, I, I definitely like the Yankees and, and I like Cole tonight. So, you know, you know, the Yankees, you know, the drill it's, it's, it would be Stanton judge. And if there was a good home run matchup for Gallo, this would be it. So I, I really am into the Yankees as one of my stacks tonight. Uh, even though I'm a guy who usually is a Velasquez defender uh, tonight is a night where I think I might end up using him, uh, yeah, picking on him a little bit. I have Cole as one of the top pitchers again, right alongside of Kershaw, Gausman, and uh, uh, what you call it, and Scherzer. I actually do have Cole slightly better than the other than those uh, Kershaw and Gausman. Uh, whether I have him better than Scherzer, I have to see. Um, cer certainly, I prefer having I prefer pitching against Seattle than against Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I guess gun to my head, I say Scherzer over Cole, but. Um, uh, I, I have the Yankees as one of the top six stacks. I have them rated like second or third. Um, and the only thing that would get in the way is that, you know, because they scored 14 runs last night. Um, but aside from that, um, uh, yeah, I have them as one of the top, uh, top stacks on the board. For what it's worth, as of right now, Mark Carlson, who's one of the most extreme hitters umpires as coach, is, is uh -oh. going to be in this game. Cole, Cole, it doesn't seem to matter all that much, to be honest with right. you. But, right. um, but it's but with Velasquez, a guy who tends to need the corners and everything, this could be a spot where you you want it. We want to get some. Uh, I'm just going to reemphasize the Yankees' point, and even if they're not stacks, I think you're going to be filtering this. This would be a, the group of guys who I'd want to get, and 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 the early ownership doesn't seem to like them very much. Uh, they did score their, all the runs, like you said. It sort of goes against our what you know the thing that you always say about you know believe you know you want to pick on the team the day after going crazy um but i i just think the yankees have to have extreme potential they've been really good this year and the weather in chicago blowing in a little bit from the right um doesn't bother me as much because they're we're, I, I, i'm gonna end up playing the righties mostly so that's who the yankees best hitters are so it's i don't really have a choice um but yeah definitely a spot where i think we want to attack what are your so thoughts we, on this Minnesota? So we got, we got COVID pricing here in this game. Like uh, this is being priced as if it's going to be, I don't know, that it's going to be, uh, let's see, suspended for COVID again. You know, we got, I mean, they're not really showing up too much for me, but okay. So Sonny Gray at 6,400. They were actually sharp about that one because it does say that he's probably going to be on a pitch count still. Yeah. Um, 
but I don't know what that means. I mean, if they say, yeah, he's going to be limited to 80 pitches. I'm like, oh, okay. You can sign me up if you want to know the truth. Right. Um, and I is, is, I mean, he's not showing up really on my board, but is Savali a bad play at, at no, 5,900? No, at, at this price, we kind of have to start taking some interest. Okay. I really believe okay. that. And he also just had a good outing against – I mean, he had eight strikeouts in five and two-thirds against Toronto in his last outing, which is a really tough team to do that yeah. with. He's given, he's given up runs. Um, you certainly can make an argument for, for taking hitters against him. I have no problem with that. But I think that he's completely in play at 5,900, um, more so than Gray because of the pitch count, like you right. mentioned. But otherwise, Gray would have been on there for me as well. And I, and I have Minnesota, by the way, as well. I, I have him as one of my top six bats also. Yeah, I think Minnesota um, is completely viable. Uh, you've got Kirilov really cheap. You've got basically everybody a little cheaper than they should be. Max Kepler I like quite a bit. Um, not really interested in the Cleveland side of it as much, to be honest with you, the hitting – but that's always feels scary to say out loud because we know Jose Ramirez is the greatest fantasy performer of all time. Um, but you, you know, you've got Miranda still cheap for, for, for them. Even if you're not playing Minnesota as a full stack, they definitely have a lot of guys you might want to use. And then of course you could round out the stack with guys like Sanchez and Buxton. Um, so I, I think, I think that this is definitely a spot you'd want to look at, but I, again, I, I don't mind taking some shots on Savale as well. I'm curious what his, about his, uh, his strikeout prop is three and a half. That seems like the easiest money of all time. Right. And I don't know why it would be that. Like I I'm, I'm literally looking around and trying to figure out what could be the reason for this. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I, I, I think that's like, it's like almost like offensive to have that. I mean, for a guy who just struck out eight and five and two thirds in his last outing against uh, what's it called? The, uh, the, the Toronto Luchy's. doesn't strike out. Yeah. How are you like, how are we going to say against Minnesota that his strikeout prop is three and a half. It just makes no sense to me. So that's a, it's an easy free bet right there for you. I feel like that's, that one's coming through uh, whether it goes well or badly for him. He's going to get three and a half. He's going to get more than three strikeouts. Um, now we get to over to the, uh, to the giants and Cardinals. And I don't know what I'm missing with Logan Webb here. Um, I don't know what's missing with him in general. Like I, I watched this guy pitch against the Dodgers in the playoffs and it felt like we had absolutely no chance against him. He has incredible stuff. He hasn't been himself yet this season, but I, I'm, I'm a little bit intrigued when you're going to throw a right-handed dominant lineup against a guy like that, that at no ownership, maybe he's the pivot instead of Freed. what's it called? Um, uh, uh, fr uh, Freed and his K prop at four and a half. I, again, tell me if I'm missing something. I have no idea why that's the case. Like, it doesn't make sense as a as a number for him at all. He's, you know, I know he's had some some low strikeout games this year. A couple times he had it against Washington. He had a one against the Mets where he had, you know, only pitched three innings in that game. The games where he's actually pitched innings, he's basically what is he at seven, six, seven, and then three. He had one one to down one, but. I think that Logan Webb, that's an, there's another K prop at, at four and a half. I, I'll take the over on that all day, and I will put him as one of my guys to consider, uh, although not a priority, and I'm definitely not interested in the hitting on uh, on that side. I'm a little surprised that Jordan Hicks is getting this much respect along with a, basically a bullpen game, and we're going to say that the, the, the Giants you know, have only a 3.8 run total. It feels a little low. Um I don't know what to do with it exactly. I, I you have 84 mile an hour, 84 degrees with a little wind blowing out. Like I, I, it just feels like a spot where God, maybe, maybe we should be considering a little bit of the giants, although it's not very, you know, it's not a priority for me, but just, just throwing it out there. Yeah. I didn't quite get to anything here. I didn't, couldn't quite squint the Logan Webb take um, just to too many other guys that have to not get there before him. Um, but like you said, I mean, St. Louis against righties, you, know, you prefer, you know, they, they don't have, they don't have the greatest record against righties. Um, and like, and also like you recall, I mean, Logan Webb just demonstrated towards the end of last season and into the playoffs that he definitely, definitely has it, you know, whatever that means. Um, I don't think, I think the slate's a little big for me to get to him, but I, I, I get it. Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to be off of it. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. It's just uh, no ownership guys that, that, that have the same upside as the top guys are always going to pique my interest a little bit. 
Um, and I and I believe in looking at K props, but I also believe in picking on them when they're wrong. Uh, something I'm going to start doing very soon, I, probably after tonight's NBA game, actually starting this so starting next week. I will have my K props and home run props every day uh, loaded on TrueDFS.com. So and and the, the, these are ones that I've I've done pretty well in the past. You got to keep in mind though, the K props I should be winning. You know, the majority of those at least 55 plus percent or 60 percent, and it'll, I think it'll be a lot better actually. But the home run props are just just want to remind everybody, nobody's supposed to ever hit a home run. So, <laughs> you know, even if I make them, I, I'm not going to go crazy with it. Except Byron Buxton. Except, except for Byron Buxton. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So we got we got the Royals and Rockies here in a I mean, obviously, this is this, that's what you got next, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, 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 this will be a lot of the chalk, I think, on the slate. Uh, I always try to remind people, but usually when I remind people, we don't have other, we have other offenses that truly stand out and may, maybe this game won't be that owned, but Freeland is, you know, he's a, he's a course pitcher, but not a course pitcher. That means he gets lit up a course pitcher that he is pretty good at limiting hard contact and tends to tends to pitch, you know, deeper into games and have better outings than he probably gets credit for. Uh, you look at his last, his last results. I mean, six innings, seven innings, five innings, five innings, five innings. And these, in you know, three home games in there, including against Philadelphia, didn't really get rocked around. So uh, did have did, did have a, a bad outing against the Dodgers and, and Cubs early in the season, but has has pitched pretty well since then. So I, I, I'm i just throwing it out there because in, in Colorado, we always want to keep in mind. And then we've got Granke, who, yeah, we're supposed to. Supposed to I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Bobby. You know what I mean? Every time I think of. And I was thinking about this. I see where you're headed, and I'm, and I'm, I was thinking of going through this whole thing. Like, well, Granky's been around a long time. Don't know. everybody always wants to attack Granky, and you know he's been around. He's been around the block. But every time I think about, it, I just think of him like throwing these freaking forty mile an hour Ephus pitches and and daring people to hit it and all this stuff. And then I think about all these freaking alleys in Colorado and all this stuff. And how does he keep this freaking game? And how does he stay in this thing? I guess that's why Colorado is going to be really popular. The combination of people wanting to play Coors and people that love to play against Granky. Um, I mean, they're going to, they're going to, I think they're going to be really popular at the end of the day. Um, KC also, but would you, would you be afraid of, of playing Colorado against Granky because of crankiness? No. or what, what do you, what do you think? No, no. I mean, in general, even with all these times when we pick on him, he's had a couple of, 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 you know, starts that you obviously want to get to him. But it's not like he's going out there. I mean, he's given up two home runs and six starts this year. It's not like he's been right. getting he, – he doesn't strike people out. He gives up a lot of hits and a lot of hard yeah. contact. But they tend to be ground ball singles through the, 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 to the you know, through between shortstop and third. It's, it's, it's not like he's giving up extra base hits, five extra base hits, and all the – you know, out of the, what, 40, 35 hits he's given up, like I think all, all but five are singles. Right. Um, all, but, all but seven are singles, sorry. Right. Um, that's, you know, that's it's just something to keep in mind, but it is Colorado and I'm definitely going to have exposure to this game. I will let ownership probably be the determining factor for me. Early projections of ownership have almost no ownership in this game, which is, I'm just, is, I'm going to tell I you. Got, I, I got Casey in the top over on the slate. Right now. Yeah, I, I think it's wrong. I think that I'm just looking at wrong ownership, but yeah, I think we want, I think we, we do, we do want exposure and especially the, uh, you know, the guys at the top of the lineup, you, you can run Freeland's one of the lefties that you can actually run on a little bit. So uh, Merrifield, Ben Attendi, uh, Witt. even Michael Taylor, uh, Bobby Witt. Uh, those guys all are really, really good plays. And obviously Salvador Perez is a monster of a human. And they don't, these guys weren't priced up to be playing in cores. So uh, they're not really pricing up much in cores this time. And, and maybe that's right, actually. You know what I mean? We keep, knocking it but at the same time it's not like we've seen these games go crazy like we used to yeah um i definitely prefer the colorado side by a little bit but i i do want exposure to this game these teams have a significantly the colorado has a significantly higher run total than everybody else so i'm very interested in this game i just am gonna let ownership dictate how much yeah i mean casey ranks number one for me but you know that doesn't that they're going to be owned as a result so uh I'm going to have, I, like I said, I'm same as before. I would not play Scherzer and Erod with a bunch of KCs, you yeah. know, on a 13 yeah. game slate. 
Yep. Um, if you're going to play KCs, that's, that's when you could do like the, like the, like the Darvish Freed combo, you know what I mean? Or the something like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that would, that would be my recommendation. Yep. Absolutely. That uh, makes sense to me. Um, what about the, uh, the angels in Oakland here? What are we, what are I actually, we I'll go there, but I have Chicago. Oh, I'm sorry. Arizona next. Oh yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Same time. Yep. So yeah. Talk about Chicago, Arizona. Yeah. I don't know why, but I, I'm actually it's a team. I never play, but I'm getting the Cubs a little bit, um, just as a value. Uh, I don't know if it's, it's probably way too big to be messing around with that, but that that's, that's what I'm getting. And I'm not really getting to too much else. I'm not getting to the Arizona. I'm not getting to the hit to the pitching at all. Yeah. Everybody always, every time Zach Davies is on the mound, it's like fire it up. Let's stack against him. And uh, you know, look, he's not, I'm not saying he's a good pitcher, but he doesn't again, guy who limits hard contact um, has given up a couple home runs and five starts, six starts this year. Um, I, I certainly see it. If the, if the roof is open in this game, this is an interesting spot to attack. I feel like if it's not, I'm not quite as interested because yeah. I want those extra, that extra 10 feet from some of these, these guys who give up these fly balls. Um, yep. But I, as a, I, there, there's not, there certainly isn't like one player that stands out to me in uh, on either of these teams. Maybe you could say Ortega 2,600 leading off. Um, but it's, it's not like I, I'm, I always, I anxiously want to stack Chicago and Arizona, two of the worst teams in baseball, but they're, they're both, they're both fine, uh, given the matchup. And if the roof is open, I will probably get some interest going there. I just, I'm, I'm going to wait to find out about that one. Who's pitching in the angels, Oakland. I've got, uh, Jeffries and Silseth, which, okay. so they took the wrong picture of him, by the way, what, what I'm looking at. They've got a picture of, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the old, he played for the Dodgers. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But uh, this guy, if I'm not mistaken, is a prospect who potentially could, you know, have a little bit of a leash. I have to do a little more digging. I'll, I'll know more later. But you see the run total even in this game. And it's it's a little bit interesting to, to take him against Oakland here. So, he might be the cheap guy who we actually do want to play. And his projection that I'm looking at has him at, you know, around 14 fantasy points, which at 5,500 to be projected that at that number is, uh, is definitely interesting. He's got a four and a half K prop and he's five and a half K. That's a, it's always pretty good when you're, when your K prop is near your price. Um, so I, so I'm open to, to, to playing this guy. If, if we, if we want to do a different type of build, I, I don't really have a whole lot of interest in the hitting. I would say that the angels tend to be just, wildly under owned and have been incredibly good all year long but you it's it's hard to play them because of the trout otani thing but maybe maybe if you're going to play a guy like silsa that's what you do is you play the the rendon trout um otani something like that or, or a full stack with silsa uh hoping that it gives them the freedom and they go off because i do think the angels are viable um it's not my favorite spot or anything like that it's just at low ownership these they've got some real hitters on this team. So, you know, guys like Trout and Otani, especially Otani, especially because he, he, he runs all the time. Um, I don't know why they let him run, but they do. And uh, I'm still betting on a, on a, on a comeback season. By the way, did you see that Rendon home run the other night where he, oh. they, they brought in the relief pitcher. They brought in the, uh, sorry, the, the, the position player. Cause they were up 11, nothing yeah. to pitch to him. So he batted left-handed and he had a home run left-handed. That's amazing. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, but I do like, I do like the little bit I've heard about this. So kid, I got to do a little more research before lock. Have you heard? Of, yeah, so I'm looking at here and one thing that's of note, and I look, this as a positive. He's going straight from double a to the right. stock. Yep. Uh, he was, I I'm, I'm reading through this and he was just, he's got some big, uh, he's got some big numbers down in double a, you know, yep. and, and, and apparently I'm just reiterating what's on the DK app, but, but, there's, there's a battle for the next for, for, for an open starting spot and he's going to be one of the people competing for it. So I, I presume they let him pitch a little bit, you know? Yep, um, yep. So it's, you know, not as if uh, it's not as if the, he's going to be up against uh, Ricky Henderson, McGuire and, and Canseco. You know what I mean? Like it's not, not as if Oakland's had that, that great shakes right now. So um, yeah. I and mean, why not? Why not a 5,500? It's definitely something you can do. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, the other side, I, I actually do have Jeffries. It's kind of like a weird punt, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much it. I, I don't really, really get to the Angels. 
I wasn't thinking of the Silseth until I you just told me who he was, and I'm looking through him. But yeah, I, I had no problem st- sticking him at a 5500. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I'm at as well. Um, now we get to look. I, you guys can think I'm being biased. I'm just going to remind everybody when you say that I'm biased towards the Dodgers, just remember this team is the best team in baseball. There's they they, they still have yet to be an underdog in a game this year. They're not going to be an underdog probably. Um, it, it's going to take a really weird matchup, like a. Oh, he's got to be. He's got to be. You know, at at the Yankees with Cole or something like that. You know, something yeah, like that. and they have to specifically not be pitching Kershaw or Kershaw, right. or uh, or Bueller. Otherwise, the Dodgers are probably still favored in that game. Is he still in the rotation? Bueller? Is he hurt? Has he been pitching? He's right now. Yeah, yeah, he's hurt okay. right now. Um, he's, he's, I mean, it's not not not, not nothing bad. Just just okay. just missed a, a start, I think. But he's still he's still he's awesome. Uh, this is I uh, I think this is the best team. Like I, I Kyle Gibson. Uh, I, I've always been a, a Kyle Gibson guy because I felt like he was very underrated for a while because he was a good real life pitcher. And even this year, it does worry me that he's, it's not like he's like not getting through innings, but I just, I mean, you have a, a guy who can't throw 95 plus against the Dodger team, which doesn't really matter. If you just put a righty on the mound against the Dodgers and just close your eyes, I'm always going to be interested in the Dodgers. On top of that, uh, we do have wind blowing out. It's 77 degrees, the warmest game at Dodger Stadium so far this season. This is the stack that I'm going to make my primary stack. I'll have the most exposure. Maybe that, that's a big slate. So maybe that only means 40% or 35% of my stacks. But this is what I'm going to be doing. And uh, I'm, it's just a great spot for them. And I think everywhere through the lineup, I'm going to remind everybody, include Cody Bellinger in your stacks. Include guys like Justin Turner, even though he's batting sixth now. And, you know, if you're going to make multiple stacks, include Chris Taylor and Lux, uh, all these guys can hit. And the, 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 the position where they're hitting the lineup doesn't necessarily reflect their talent level. So I, uh, I would be high on the Dodgers tonight. And obviously, as always, I'm high on Kershaw. But I, I mean, who, you know, who's been really good this year is, is Kershaw, by the way. He's been he's been basically pretty much like unbelievable in real life uh, pitching. He's just been a really, you know, he, it's hard to believe he's, he is where he is. I worry about the strikeout upside a little bit. Um, Philly's got some good righties in there uh, with Castellanos, Hoskins. I like the bombs in there for Kershaw's sake. Uh, but Segura is a, a contact guy. Rio Muto batting sixth. There are some good bats in this lineup uh, that has me with Kershaw just a tiny bit below the other guys we talked about, like Cole especially. But I do think he's right there, and I'm not definitely going to have some exposure there. Yeah, um, I have the, uh, you know, I have the Dodgers and the Angels as very similar, you know, just kind of just off of the top options. But I think the low owner, I think they're both going to be low owned, um, uh, Dodgers and Angels. So I, I'm, I'm kind of with you um, uh, with the Dodgers here. Um, so Dodgers and, and you know, just looking back at the Angels as well, I have a little more interest in that than I may have let on. Yeah. Um, and pitching wise, um, you know, the more I'm thinking about it, you know, with, with, with Kershaw and all these other guys, I mean, Philly's Philly's not bad. You know, Philly to me is like the white, you know, they're just they're like the White Sox as opposed to, you know, Scherzer gets to go against Seattle. Not that Seattle's the worst team in baseball or anything. Oh, like right, that. right. I hear you though. But but uh, I think Scherzer, as I'm talking through it, through this, I mean, even without a projection, I can kind of tell that Scherzer's just going to be, uh, he's just going to look like the best, the safest play for me. You know. I agree. Um, so yeah, and Kershaw, you know, Kershaw's Kershaw. I'm not going to tell anybody not to play Kershaw. Um, but, uh, I just, I think it's still a little bit, a little bit worse of a play. Uh, so yeah, Dodgers, uh, uh, definitely one of the top ownership adjusted plays for me. I mean, may, am I wrong? Is Do- are the Dodgers going to be owned? I'm not seeing that first look at least. I don't think that they're going to be crazy owned, but I think they'll, I mean, like, I think the angels would be like really unowned. And I think the Dodgers will have some guys okay. near double digits. I, I think so people, they, people did see the Dodgers, you know, make put up seven in like, the, yeah. in, like one in, in like one inning. Last time. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's just one of those things by the time the day gets done and everybody's talking about it, you just, right. it's hard to re, like resist that offense and they're not like expensive. Like they have been, I mean, right. Muncie at 4.2 is kind of, you know, silly. Will Smith at 3.9 is the best catching option on the slate. Um, in my opinion, uh, Mookie is the one who's expensive at 55, but that's not even crazy for him. Three minute five. And we paid six K for the, all these guys, including Trey Turner. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very on board with the Dodgers stack and I'm sort of surprised that the projections don't like them even more. Um, 
yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, I do want to run through real quick my, you know, so I have the Dodgers as the number one stack for me right now. I think the both sides of the KC Colorado game, I sort of like stacking KC better because they, I don't love stacking against Freeland. That's the problem, but KC can steal bases. They, they have multiple routes to get you there. Whereas Colorado, you're just hoping for all the hitting, which is fine also, but uh, both sides of that game would be next for me, followed by the Yankees, followed by Texas. And then, some interest in Detroit. That's sort of what my overall is. And my pitching, I do have it very, very close, as we talked about, between Scherzer, Scherzer being number one. After that, I have Cole and Gaussman really close, and I have Kershaw just a notch below. But, boy, I'll feel really stupid if he goes out there and pitches a, a vintage Kershaw game. Um because I, I, I do think I'm going to be probably below what I'm looking at the field having him at right now. But I, I, he versus Gaussman is a tough conversation, is a tough one to figure out. Uh, we, see, we, we saw Kershaw with the, the high strikeout game this year, and then we saw him with that pitch really well, and I'll only have two strikeouts in his last time. So it's, it's kind of hard to, to pick up on his trends right now. So Gaussman and, and Cole certainly see – Gaussman, Scherzer, and Cole with the K props that they have certainly seem like the, the slightly better options – um and Kershaw at six and a half makes sense too I, all these guys are, are interesting but I will be mixing in some of the uh the the guys we talked about Darvish Savale Silseth um those would be my favorite other guys to play and and I think there's an argument for Logan Webb as well but uh that's just maybe a little bit further maybe not the right slate for it I guess yeah going back all the way to the beginning I, maybe maybe Houston's a little better than I thought I don't know maybe not um yeah, my, my, I, think, my, I think they're okay. I, I, I yeah. think okay. What I meant was that I was expecting them to be like higher own when I first started talking about it, but I think this Colorado game is really going to eat up more more ownership than it should for a thirteen game slate. Um, yep, maybe maybe not. I don't know. Just, um, what, 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 what else are people really going to play? Um, because all these hitting environments have a. I don't know. They have a decent pitching. To me. I guess people play Texas, I guess, but some, I don't know. Who's, who's really going to play Texas. I mean, right. It's, 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 it does. What I'm looking at early has very spread out ownership. The only thing with Texas is you get the cheap Brad Miller. You have Simeon right. who's probably too cheap. Um, Cole Calhoun and Seager to round out a stack. So I think those guys will have some ownership, but uh, I don't know. It, it, it does feel pretty spread out to the media today. I don't know, but that's why I think the KC Colorado, I think is especially, you know, at least the Colorado side's priced up a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, KC, they, they didn't, but, but then again, Freeland's probably, I don't want to say better. I, you know what I mean? They're, they're, I, I consider them both very similar Coorsy type guys. I think, I don't know. Yep, yep. Um, you, you, need, you need to have enough finesse to get through these games. You know what I mean? In, in Colorado. Yeah. Um, so I, for me, the look, Casey, Casey Colorado certainly is going to project well, but I kind of want to go back to the, the, the Angels Dodgers as, as my top options. Angels are tough because they're really expensive. You know, you got two guys over 6K that you want to play, you know, when, when, when you have two guys that are over 6K that you want to play with Otani and Trout, it's a lot yeah. of harder than let's say you want to play Minnesota where, you know, you play Buxton and then you can, play your Kepler's and all this stuff, you yep, know, yep. but KC, I mean, I, I, it'd be scary to do a full angel stack and leave out Otani, you know what I mean? Or a full angel stack and leave out Trout, obviously. Right. I mean, you know, these other guys like Rendon is reasonable and Walsh is reasonable, you know, but, yep. but, but you do, you, that's, that's, that's why angels are tough. I, I think that as I talk through this, I think the Dodgers might be the GPP idea. Um, uh, and the other guy, the other teams I mentioned before, Minnesota, Texas, both, uh, you know, both look, look to be good and the Yankees as well. Pitching wise, again, I'll update projections and stuff, but you know, the, the, I, I think that the, I think the logical pairing is going to be um, Scherzer Erod, but then again, depending on what hitting you use depends on whether you want to use that pairing or not. You know, I, I think that Bobby came up with some really, really good pivots between Freed and Darvish, you know, um, and if you really wanted to go, go cuckoo, I mean, you, you know, like Logan Webb is going to be like less than 5% owned probably. Yep. And he, he's one of the best pitchers, you know what I mean? Yep. So, so, so that's, that's a place you can go. And if you wanted to go ultra cheapo 
and you didn't want to play Erod, I think Bobby brought up, we brought up a couple of ideas, brought the, the, the Angels rookie um, and uh, Sonny Gray, not really. Um, just because of the pitch count, but the guy in the Sunny Gray game, I think Savale is, is, is yeah, the Savale. That was the other one, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. So I, th- I think it's a it's a cool thirteen game slate, man. I, I like yeah. it. I like yeah, it. It should, it should be a fun one after uh, you know having sort of lame slates yesterday. Although I can't complain much, and never can complain much when you when you're winning on slates, right? Like, but it was uh, it was those small slates the, the last couple. I'll, t- I'll tell you what was also a good. I just kind of reviewed the takes, right? I, I think it, it was a good observation. I think it's obviously it's a great observation Bobby had about the Colorado game that Freeland is someone you can run on. So if you are going to play KC, you can make it a priority to play, you know, one or one of, or maybe two of, you know, of uh, wit, uh, both, wits. W- both wits. Right. And, and, and was Michael Taylor also, you know, yep. so that, that, that's, that's something you can do to, I would say differentiate yourself, but at least can leverage, you know, leverage your takes a little bit and, and just get you know, that stolen base upside. Yep, absolutely. And, and I, I will have all my plays as well as my bets of the day up uh, in a little bit, probably by the time some of you are watching this and uh, my early builds, which have been have been pretty good. So let's uh, let's make a run today, guys. And Sheets, is there, is there anything else? No, depending on what else I can get done today. Um, I don't know. I'm not going out for dinner tonight, so it's possible I could be there at six. OK, um, I'll let you know. Uh, otherwise, have a good weekend and uh, you'll see MMA videos, see all kinds of stuff going on. Awesome. Well, good luck to everybody today, and we will hopefully see you at the top of the leaderboards. All right.